Di Foster and Karen Dickens, and we're going to be talking a little bit about life and what it means and how it's affected individuals in our community and what we can do to help and support uh, in more ways than just obviously just about financial as well, so it's because it's about more than that as well. So we'll be coming back with that, and let's continue on with a little bit of songs celebrating life, and uh, I love Neil Diamond, and we're going to be playing uh, Surviving the Life, and then I'll be having my very special guest come on. Stay tuned as we continue with Love Vocal, Overberg. Pleasure to have you in the studio on this very sunny but nice and crisp morning. It's wonderful to be here in the Overberg. So, Di, you're here to tell us about a very, very interesting program that you are now joined as a and and are actually uh, yes. a part of and pushing. So, tell us all us all ab- <laughs> tell us all about Back Buddy and then about the very special person that you are backing. Great. Well, firstly, thank you very much for having us on the radio. I so appreciate it. And firstly, I mean, I thought I really wanted to come live to chat about um, this incredible um, campaign that's very close to my heart. And I never expected, and I'm just so proud of Karen joining me today. (laughs) Thank you. Wow, she's so brave to join me. Okay, let me just explain that one week ago, I knew nothing about Baka Buddy. I didn't even know they existed. Mm-hmm. I was watching rugby with my husband. Um, how lucky am I? Because I know we are all facing such adversity in these times. And I'm watching the rugby thinking, wow, I'm sitting here watching rugby. And I mean, what do we say to Karen except, and a lot of others in, that are facing this situation? And they're going, um, everybody needs help. Um, Karen doesn't need a casserole. <laughs> Karen needs cash. So that thought went into my mind. And I thought, how can I do this? So I contacted my brother on WhatsApp. And it's very close to my heart because but I almost lost both of my brothers to COVID. And my one brother said to me, uh, Backer Buddy. And I was like, who are they? What are they about? And he explained to me, just go on to it and have a look. He did a close friend's, raised money for a close friend's daughter that had just about no money to pay for their medical bills. Um, And he said, if you do that, I'll chip in 10,000 rand. And I was blown away. My brother doesn't have, I mean, he's not, sorry, bro, um, (laughs) like a massive (laughs) cash flow. So please don't think this. This is simply about helping somebody else. Okay, so tell us a little bit about the Back of Body program. What is it about? What's it for? And how are you, what are you using it for? So, Backer Buddy is a proudly South African um, website okay. that you can go onto. To date, they've raised over 270 million rand for really good causes. They support individuals and charities in raiding funds for various needs, be it medical, education, good deeds. You should really give it a try because, I, like I said, I knew nothing about them. And... Wow, I mean, have I learned up to speed so quickly um, what it is they're all about. It's spelled B-A-C-K-A-B-U-D-D-Y, as in backabuddy, dot C-O dot Z-A. Just say it once again. Backabuddy. It's all one word, B-A-C-K-A-B-U-D-D-Y, dot C-O dot Z-A. And so this is really about South Africans helping South Africans. Yes, exactly that. Okay. It's also a very trustworthy system because what they do is they verify and authenticate every single person. Okay, so you got onto the system, you've learned yes. all about back a buddy, and then you yes. decided you were going to be part of it and back Absolutely. a buddy. So tell us about the buddy that you're backing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I kept seeing Karen's po- uh, posts on Facebook. Okay. And you know, a lot of people just say, we're praying for you. Um, thinking of you, thinking of you, and like I said to you earlier, my thought was, well, with these exclamating uh, medical bills that are actually sitting at an astronomical amount at the moment, um, how can we help Karen? I mean, she was saying she was borrowing money from her dad, etc., and it's just actually, why not? Okay. What else can one do? You know, everybody wants to help. Okay, so maybe at this point, let's bring in Karen. Good morning, Good Karen, morning. and welcome to the show. So maybe tell us a little bit about who you are. 
And right. why is it that uh, somebody that just has been uh, a friend of yours and actually doesn't know your husband that well, whereas I'm the opposite, I actually know your husband <laughs> and I actually don't know you uh, uh, at all, why would somebody who just knows you all of a sudden get behind this back of buddy problem? So maybe just tell us a little bit about what's going on in your life. Right. I'm all. I think now you've kind of um, really kind of just entered with the, you know, you, you just brought in the, the solid piece, the heart of this campaign, mm. because what I did for me there was to show what COVID has done to people in this world. It's brought about our vulnerability. It's brought about our exposure. It's brought about our insecurity, our fears, um, because with this isolation and quarantine, and we are humans, we want to be touched, we want to be in reach, mm. and we've all been pulled away from that. But it's turned everyone into digging into their own hearts and looking at themselves again and saying, what are we about as human? And this compassion that Diane has shown. And I'm understanding my vulnerability and mm. what I'm going through. And of course, just for our listeners, this is a very personal thing to you because your husband is in hospital right now. He's, he's on in a an induced, He's yes. an, uh, on a ventilator in an induced coma and he's been there for day 20, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So Monday will be three weeks on a ventilator and um, that is fo that was followed um, one week on high oxygen flow in the provincial hospital and then he was transferred to Medi-Clinic. Medi -clinic. And uh, a lot of people might know, might not know Peter, but you'll certainly know the brand mm. that he's a part of. And that's, and I have to say it very slowly because it's a really nice, it's <laughs> Falk and Good yes. beer. And if you say it fast enough, you can see where it gets into it. So he's the, the mastermind behind that beer brand as and well as... And also Alton Hat. Alton yeah. Hat. And, which, and, and some wonderful gins as well, which I've also had the pleasure often at Hermanus Peter. Fontaine country market to yeah. to test so he's your husband and right. he's in hospital he got COVID uh, he had actually booked to get a vaccination but it yes. hasn't come up yet and he's now been in hospital for almost three weeks so yeah, this is the whole context illness, five weeks yeah so it's it's a serious personal problem for mm -hmm. you as well and uh, Di heard about it and decided she wanted to do something about it right Yes, and I think what it has exposed is that so many people has walked this path. Uh, I basically broke the news on the 24th of July, which was my birthday, and people were celebrating my birthday and wishing me a good day and hoping I had a fantastic day, and I had to say, guys, no, I haven't. I've just hospitalized my husband after a week of illness, okay. and uh, it was deteriorating fast. So it was kind of then, it was only then that people got in contact with me and said, you know, I don't feel alone. I've actually walked the same path. I've just been in the hospital for a month or my brother's just passed away or can we talk about it? Mm. And then I thought, I wonder why people treat this virus as um, something you don't talk about. Is it something that brings out your scared? Um, is it something you think people are going to hold against you? And it looks like people do actually. People want to stay away. Sure. As listeners will know, uh, because I don't hide it, I did have COVID during December, so did I. and uh, <laughs> it's, it's and despite me doing everything I possibly can, uh, so the listeners who know me know that I don't, and I talk about it often mm. because I do believe uh, that it's important. Now, one of the things I did ask you to do was to come up with some wonderful songs that uh, Peter, in particular. Uh, would enjoy and you've come up with a really lovely list so why don't we go into a little bit of music and uh, tell us about the first song by the one and only Mr. Tom Jones uh, okay I couldn't do any Roger Waters or Pink Floyd because it's a little bit heavy for 10 o'clock in yeah, the morning sure. especially the philosophy but, band and, and, he and those are actually Peter's uh, favorite yes. bands yes yes and or oh, ACDC yeah. <laughs> but uh, what I did choose was Delilah by Tom Jones and we had the privilege of spending 20 years overseas. We took an opportunity in 1998, went to Dubai. Um, we said if it's going to work out, it works out. If it doesn't, let's go. But we've had a fantastic journey in life. We took all the opportunities. We wove this wonderful um, tapestry, the magic carpet ride that was done it. We was 10 years in Dubai, 3 years in Australia, mm, and 10 years in England. Wonderful. And rugby sevens. Rugby sevens in Dubai everywhere we go because Peter's a big rugby fan and he's also a rugby referee. Uh, that he qualified in Australia for. But why I chose this song and our good memories is to say it's a good reminder seeing that the show is about life, to live it every minute, to experience it. It's short. Don't wait for it. Go and get life and just do the best so you make these memories. There we go. So we've got Tom Jones and Delilah. Um, 
your radio station, the radio station that cares about you. And today, I've got Di Foster and Karen Dickens on, and we're talking about Peter Dickens. Yes, the husband of Karen Dickens, and this really proudly South African local is like a scheme called Back a Buddy, which has been set up as a way for South Africans to help South Africans who are in need. So, Di, you told us a little bit about the Back a Buddy scheme, and uh, it sounds fantastic. And you decided you were going to set one up for for Peter. So, That's tell us a, tell us a little bit about how much was the target, where we are now, and why that target. And maybe Karen will come in mm. and tell sure. us a little bit about that as well. Well. I asked Karen if it would be okay, and initially, I mean, everybody at the beginning, you know, they're a little bit embarrassed or what have you. Mm. I was like, listen, lady, we just need to get on with this. So, um, and let's see what we can come up with. So, I asked Karen what the medical bills were like, because they also had to get a quote from MediClinic as to what do they think they were going to be in for. Mm. And I've actually brought the statement with me, because at the moment, we're just on half a million that needs to get paid back to To hospital. MediClinic, okay. Correct. And I think one of the interesting things is, is you first actually went to the provincial hospital, yes. but and and... and I don't want to disparage our provincial hospital no. at all, especially no. the ones that we have here, thankfully, uh, in the Overberg, because they're absolutely amazing. Yes, they they're are. really, really good, but they couldn't even deal with no. Peter's health issues. So it's important to say that you know that you went to the provincial hospital first, but they couldn't. So Medi Clinic was the next option, yeah. well, the only option actually here yeah. in this area. Okay, that's correct. So. Um, that's how we came up with the goal of um, 600,000 because, um, and it's actually a moving target. So at the moment, that's where we stand. Who knows where it's going to take us? I mean, we really don't know what's going to happen. And at the moment, I'm so proud to say that we have reached a target of, no, well, actually not a target, mm. a figure of just under 172,000, which is awesome. A and lot that's of after that, how long? That's only after, I think I'm on day four now. So that's amazing progress. That we, I'm on day fantastic. four. But however, a lot of those donations have come in from Karen's um, overseas mm -hmm. contacts because Backer Buddy is actually pretty damn amazing in that it can you can donate from all over the world. Okay. It, it's safe and secure, but Karen can now actually just take over and say how lovely she's, the okay. amazing support she's had from local. Yeah. Um, the support has been absolutely an outpour of love and understanding. Uh, local businesses, because we're a beer and a spirit producer, um, restaurants, our customers like Fusion Restaurant, Lizette's, um, a round table and manas, mm. they have done absolutely fantastic and not only in helping us out with money but also in the compassion and the understanding and by being the light for um, for the community so I think COVID again comes back to you know you give out and you help other people and that is so satisfying and comforting to know that you're not alone in this and Everyone also I think one of the important things to, to bring out is there are many people in our community um, uh, the that don't have medical aid because medical aid is expensive and unless you're in Correct. a um, let's call it a sort of a big company type job where they have medical aid as yeah. part of it for many people who run their small businesses having medical aid is just simply not an option and unaffordable and that is basically what happened to us we uh, we are both British citizens so the idea and the vision was because Peter's the master distiller is we set up the kitchen in South Africa we make a unique product featuring all the benefits and fantastic stuff of South Africa and export it back to the UK and European markets so with that in mind we were going to be traveling six months to the UK and six months in South Africa and in the UK as you know there's the NHS which is free medical so we are two healthy 53 year olds we don't have um, children unfortunately that we couldn't help but we're active we go out we mm. you know we're just very healthy we don't see doctors other than the, uh, the odd um, dental checkup so with not being ill we're starting a company where as you say um, the contribution to a medical aid or a hospital plan is half a salary yeah and then we, you know, had an option of England, but then came lockdown, then came with no travel bans, then came we can't go anywhere, and the next minute we were in serious trouble. Okay, good. So um, this makes uh, 
good time to do the next song, which was Cat Stevens. Tell us, why did you do Cat Stevens? Because we are finding ourselves in a wild, <laughs> wild world. Okay. And But there is a way out because when you have hope, hope overrules fears. And I'll talk a little bit about that. And if anyone ever wants to talk to me about the journey, the cruel, cruel waiting journey I've been on the last four weeks, please do because the more you speak about it, the more you realize we're all in this together. Mm. And we've also had to slow down because we've had to focus on the journey and not the destination. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's teaching us, I think, to appreciate life. And after we finish with Cat Stevens and uh, Wild World, I think let's talk about some of the learnings that have come out of it. Mm. What have you learned? What are some of the things that are giving you hope? What are some of the things that are inspiring you? And um, what are the lessons that you've learned out of it as well? I have already talking so about that. <laughs> we will, we'll talk about that, but let's take a bit of a break and listen to Cat Stevens and Wild World. from our studios here in the heart of Amonis, down by the New Harbor. And I've got uh, Corin Dickens and uh, Di Foster with me. And we're talking about the Backer Buddy scheme and also about uh, one of the recipients of Backer Buddy, which is Peter Dickens, the husband of Karen Dickens. And uh, Karen, we know this has been a incredibly not just, you know, stressful, anxious, whatever adjectives that you want to mm. put in there, time for well, not just you but also your friends and your family and the people that care about uh, mm -hmm. both of you but one of the things that I, I really enjoyed when we were sort of talking beforehand over the mm -hmm. last couple of days is that you've been finding inspiration and hope yes. and learning out of it and good news to put it in that way why don't you just tell us a little bit about some of that journey that you've going through, what you've learned, and, and just share it with our listeners so that they can just get a feel and maybe get some inspiration themselves. I think the first thing that we must besef is die die virus is a vreselijke virus van niemand weet waar hy gaan het. Die dokters, beste van die tyd sê mm. vir my, as hulle na my manse kondisie kyk, dis complicated, want hulle weet nie wat die virus yes. gaan doen nie. Dis nie soos kanker of van die ander soort van siektes wat jarela is en hulle kan beplan nie. Mm. Elke dag is een nieuwe soort van surprise. And, and, and the fact that COVID affects each individually differently. differently. Yeah, and that's what you have to uh, yeah. understand. Hierdie virus discrimineer nie. Mm. As jy dink, hy gaan jy los, dan mm. moet jy weer dink. Ons was ses mense by mekaar gewees, wat soort van ons het die responsible track and trace gedoen, yeah. om te kyk, yeah. vir wie moet ons laat weet. Van die ses mense, vier het positief getoets, twee was negatief. Yeah. Van die vier wat positief was, twee het in ons hospitaal geëindig, mm. en is uit, my man is nou exactly. nog daar vijf weke te It's almost like a roulette wheel, isn't it? It is, en as jy eers betrokke raak, die eerste wave het allemaal net gesê, dit is een nommer, en allemaal het bykie afgelag, want soort van, jy weet, wat jy yeah. op jy nies hoor, en jy sê niks nie, en jy hoor niks nie, al wat jy weet is, mens is uh, livelihoods word beinvloed, yeah. want alles is toe. Yeah. Maar nou sit ons in wave 3, en ek kan letterlijk, ek dink allemaal om my het het, of het iemand verloor, ek weet van families wat twee, drie mense verloor het, die effect is net ongelooflik, maar ek dink wat het gedoen het, is die isolatie, en allemaal wat wegstaan, mm. dit het mense weer laat dink, en dit het die humanity begin uitbring, dit het die menselijkheid uitgebring, want mense is daar om jou te help, mm. jy moet nie praat, yeah. en ek dink een van die grootste sielkundige lesse, wat mys hier moet aanvaar, is dat, omdat alles gaan oor insecurity en onzekerheid, want jy is dagelijks, uh, die cruel waiting, die cruel journey waar ons op die oomlik is, jy weet nie wat ek kan toe dit yeah. gaan he. Yeah. Die hospitaal, die dokters en die sisters het haar op hulle tanden om die monitors te staan en kyk, maar dan sy op, dan sy af. And they're really and wonderful, I mean, I've, I've, I've met I will start crying now, die yeah. dokters en die sisters yeah. bakleid, en my man bakleid terug, mm. I fight. My man is a ware fighter mm. en uh, ons gaan nou na die volgende song luister, mm. wat ek specifiek gekies het, want hy het, uh, as hy iets begin doen, dan doen hy iets voluit. Hy het die, by die Suid-Afrikaanse Weermacht aangesluit, hy het een kaptein geword, yeah. toe het hy die integration gedoen van die SIDF en die SINDF en hy het mm. aangegaan en hy doen baie veterane um, sake. Die laaste sak het hy vir al die godse wat hy in negester gepleid het, hy sy legion de neer mm. gekry, wat soort van die World War II decoration was, maar ek gaan a funny topic of yeah. <laughs> but I proud with my man. <laughs> but, but but every day during this time, what what's 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 giving you hope and what's inspiring you? People around me, businesses around me, um the 
outpour of love, the outpour of what can I do for you. People want to help. They feel mm. powerless. They can see what you're going through. Man, niemand wird um to help. Yeah. Well, that's where everybody comes into it, doesn't it? It makes it so effortless. Yeah. And it's just actually so um, cool that you can do it and you make a difference. Yeah. And what's so beautiful about it as well, I love Karen because I didn't um, know, like I said, I didn't know what Baka Buddy was. Mm -hmm. And when the first donations came in, I had no idea that all the all the people that are contributing, your comments come up online and your comments actually go onto the website. And that is also so inspirational for the yeah. person that's actually mm -hmm. receiving the money mm -hmm. and getting these amazing comments from Just all over the fighting. world. I mean, we've had some donations from people like, dude, I don't know you, but I know your beer. Wow, cool. Yeah. Like, get better. You know, how amazing <laughs> is that? I think that what what the risk to a market is the anxiety. So Dino said, I said he back about the begin. In said the park, I met my daughter. I brought and I go only. When that was for me, I get the force of failure. I can't look after my husband. I can't ask people for money. How can I ask people for support? And I just got to a stage now where I realize people want to help. And if they can't help financially, they'll share the link. If they can't share the link, they'll come and bring me a bunny. I have now got a bunny that's replacing Peter for the next week or so until he gets home. Something to kiddle with. Something to cuddle with, right? Okay. So we've just got a we've just got a couple moments, and then of course uh, Monique's going to be coming in with the Afrikaans uh, top twenty. So, last question to both of you, um, Di, if you got a sort of one final message that you'd like to get out, what would that message be? Yes, I do. Um, life doesn't have a price. Hope okay. does. Okay. I've also been thrown some lucky curveballs in my life. And um, I always think of the hourglass. By flipping it upside down, it allows you the freedom to refocus and to rethink and to become unstuck. As you immediately forced to look at other possibilities, be it in a, doing a painting or whatever you face within life. Okay. Honestly, you know, it just makes you completely flip it on its head. And see what see what happens. The sort of make lemons out of lemonade type idea. One hundred percent. Okay, and yourself, Karen. Oh, what the infinite ten lessons that I learned. What's what's the message you want to? Would you like to gratitude. leave with our listeners? What would it be? Besides what? gratitude, mm -hmm. is do not let fear get on top get on top of you. Mm -hmm. You are what you think. You are what you manifest. So daily, I look at the medical facts of my husband. Mm -hmm. I box it. I put it under the bed, and then I manifest that my husband's going to come home because he's a miracle man. Okay, keep the hope and let it override your fear. Don't let fear take over your brain because this is an anxiety disease and it makes people anxious, A, because psychologically and B, because physically, when your lungs start shutting down, it is a real thing. Talk to other people. People are there to help. They've walked the journey. It's so much better than it's shared. And manifest every single day. Don't get... Don't give doubt a chance in your mind because then you will spiral downwards. You've got to just raise up and do for other people. I mean, I spoke to Frandry Wild Weed last night, cancer survivor, two years, mm. unexpected. The lesson she's learned as well is that whole thing about, you know, you're not alone. Um, you can fight this with Correct. other people. Yeah. Oh, there's so many learnings. I can talk for another hour. Okay. <laughs> and it will not be an ending, say, as a And with my Afrikaans. Yeah. ending, say, as a uh, yeah, uh, to donate to Peter, yeah. you go to the Backer Buddy page and they have very kindly put it on their home page. So it'll actually be like in your face when okay. you go there. You'll see it very and quickly. Uh, and of course, if and buy a donkey for Amal. Yeah. And of course, if there's other people in the community, please also go in there. And if you think somebody in your community Absolutely. needs help, that's what no. that's there for as well. So we're going to end on uh, a final song, uh, a beautiful song. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the song by uh, Bok van Blik. Bok van Blik. Hey, <laughs> Bok van Blik. Oh, no, sorry. I'm, I, can't, I couldn't read it properly. Sorry. Bok, yeah, Bok van Blik. Yeah, yeah. It looked like an eye for me. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Go for it. Tell us about my man it, uh, is a military historian. He runs her own blog site called The Observation Post that he started um, after his dad passed away in 2015 as a dedication. He's always been very passionate um, on his beer. You'll see that on his Alton Hat mm. range where he celebrates World War II South African soldiers. And, um, yeah, as I say, he fought in, in England. He started the Royal British Legion and the South African Brit uh, Legion, um, England branch. 
to in order to get South Africa back to the Cenotaph Parade, which we left, uh, we were kicked out after we left the Commonwealth mm. of Nations. But Peter thought that um, we, it's our rightful position. It's a big um, commemoration of soldiers to not live and forget them. And he achieved that after two years of hard fighting in the UK. And now every year on the 11th of November, when the Queen takes her curtsy in mm -hmm. front of that Cenotaph, South Africa is present. Okay, wonderful. Amazing. So, tell us the song. You haven't told us the name of the song yet. Oh, the cop line. Book from Black. Okay, thank you both so much for coming in. Thank you for sharing your story, Karen. I'm sure it's been an inspiration. And uh, as you said, we have to talk about these things. Let's not hide. No, under and if a anyone. Bush. And how do they get a hold of you if they want to talk? Oh, to I'll you? give you my mobile number. They can text me, WhatsApp. Can just, just say it. Uh, 067. 067. 360. 360-9020. And make sure your cup is full and talk about it because if your cup's not full, you can't pass it on. Okay. And look after your own, own mental health. Okay. So thank you, ladies. Uh, we'll keep Peter in our prayers. Thank you and very we much. we wish for everything for the future. Thank you very much. It's inspiring. Thanks for the opportunity. Bye-bye, okay. Donkey. Tell everyone.